where I left my hero. Pretty much everybody DCs. I mean, he was dead anyway, to be fair. So uh, The Magnus dying, though... Was Magnus actually in... Yes, yeah, so how... Magnus... I think Magnus, like, must have run in and tanked the tower. He something. died, like... R you can see where his body is. He died, like, right here. That's definitely he a range of the, the tower. Ta tanked the tower while Storm was, like, sitting in the well. And so Storm... Yeah, he didn't get credit for an assist or anything. That's... Really strange. Okay, so the server just yeah, I think actually I imploded. Ideally, there should be a reload, but Darkseer was a hundred percent dead there. There's he had no no vacuum yet. The surge was on cooldown. There's there's just no way he lives. There. Oh yeah, the I, the Darkseer I think is not even think something you can argue. The Magnus is the other one that uh, I feel like it almost makes up for it. He soloed into the he died to the tower, but. Storm Spirit got sent back to the well, so he didn't get anything out of it. Now Storm's going to have to walk back anyhow, so... <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, it, it is no doubt uh, a, a shitty situation, but it feels somewhat even to me, honestly, after the way that is that has come about. And now they're, He they're, did have stick. I, I think he's still dead there, though. Bloodseeker had the boots, had the oov even, uh, and I'm pretty sure gets the kill. Yeah, I, I feel like with players arguing about these kind of mechanics, it's not really my place to, yeah, like, to like say. Like Mitch said, he's he's probably dead. Yeah, that's I'm glad he uh, <laughs> glad he's come to terms with that because unless unless like they unless he fogged them and Sal, but I, I don't see how he fogs them because they had a lane ward. So. Yeah, see, if it's another hero besides Bloodseeker, I think you could make oh, a yeah, case. Oh yeah, and, for and that. it's a Bloodseeker. It's he's a Bloodseeker. He, he does he, have thirst. He's, he's got two points in thirst. He's chasing him down. There's almost no way you're getting away from a Bloodseeker in that scenario. You basically have to be drunk and just a click like. Back yeah. towards his base or something. Oh, did Storm actually die? Has he died? He has so two Storm, deaths now. Like, Storm suicided and Magnus suicided, I think. So Storm and Magnus just stood there and died to each other's towers. <laughs> I think Storm probably <laughs> died to Mag's creep wave, and then the Mag just died to the enemy tower or something like that. Well, Dota 2. This is what happens when you let computers take over. They do some wonky stuff. So we'll see what the ruling is here. I'm sure the admins are deliberating right now, folks, deciding uh, whether we're going to uh, reload or just continue on from where we are here. Uh, it seems like Vega does... Uh, looks like we are going to be reloading. Vega does have a pretty big advantage right now. About 3k XP, 2k experience. It's hard to say. So... Um Okay, looks like we... So they unpause and then they say... Okay, okay they so we are going to reload. So we're gonna... safe to DC here, so... This is when, yeah, Darkseer was full HP, diving bottom. Okay, so Storm I mean, he can easily live died. just running the other way, so. Okay, so let's take a look at here. Uh, okay, we're, we're not in game yet. Yeah, we're, we're in. We can uh, switch oh, over whenever. I think when whenever. you reload, the last time I saw a reload, it, like, messes up the rune spawns in the day-night cycle. Yeah, it's... 
Wait, 6 a.m. daytime right now at five minutes. So that is definitely not right. That's funky. So stacks, the other thing that tend to get a little messed up. Looks like the big fatty for the dire is still in the jungle. We'll see if uh, the camps actually spawn properly after this. Sometimes the stacked camps do weird stuff with uh, with the, the leash the and they'll run around. Be thrown off as well. Yeah, the neutrals are are kind of weird, but there's no no lone druid, nobody with with summons that really don't like reloads. So that should oh, be it's, okay. I think it's the it's the. There's no creeps at the lanes. It's the f Oh, the creeps didn't spawn. So we're going to have a one wave. Is I think it's just the first wave that gets messed up, right? I don't think we want I think it's just the first <laughs> creep wave. Yeah, I don't think reloading is going to fix anything here. Well, at this point we're kind of stuck. Right? Yeah, unless they want to do a full remake. Which this yeah, that that doesn't is an really feel that fair for for Vega, but I think we should just go. Yeah, I think this is definitely the right call. This is one of those we're just stuck in kind of a shitty situation here. Mitch takes a few tower shots. So this is where that last fight started. We'll see if it goes a different way. He does surge it's, coconut. This looks okay. exactly the same. The, the last time he turned around to fight, though. Yeah. I don't know. Actually, maybe it was because of the lag out that he turned to fight. I'm not really sure. That's but. possible, actually. It did seem like kind of an odd man up there. So Although he didn't say anything. He was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I was probably dead. And yeah. I, I, think, I think he didn't do the math quite right last time. And So the Dark Seer lives... That's good. Storm did get ganked moments before that. He's still 0 and 1, so that did get processed. So, okay, we're, we're back at it. Not too bad here. Creeps are coming out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I th all it, would be, it, would, it would be a little interesting if no creeps spawn. Like, what do you do at that you point? You just have this minute where it's just hero on hero action, sta standing at the towers. Yeah, it's uh, a little funky. So, okay, uh, the sad thing is we lose our graphs a little bit, but it is Vega holding on to about a 1,500 net worth lead here. Experience is still all sorts of jacked up, but uh, Vega are pretty soundly in the lead. Bloodseeker and Magnus topping the uh, last hit charts, and even this Tusk, Mag in the offlane, has gotten a Snowball. lot of farm. Yeah, he goes in onto Lizard here, he finds the Coddle, hits him with the Snowball. Ice shards follow up, nowhere for the Coddle to go, just tries to channel and illuminate. Meanwhile, mid lane, no one oh. dropped the RP, they tried to gank him with the Venge, zipping in his Gogi. He's overcommitted, though, and they might be able to turn this with the shockwave damage coming out. They heal from the witch dog to one more auto attack. He bottles up. He's barely going to live until in comes the additional two heroes rotating on through and they'll end up securing the kill. And now, uh, as we hit the six minute mark, it was a double bounty rune spawn. Okay, so I think it's counting that as the zero minute rune spawn. And now it should be normal rune spawns from here on out. Okay. While that was all happening, uh, Mitch does find a solo kill bottom Ooh, Bloodseeker. Wow, level five Dark Seer. Yeah, they, that's, I that's mean, this is big. something Valve does need to fix before TI and the reloads bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, top lane. Are they gonna make a go here? Mm -hmm. Milan what? initiated on Arctic Burn up in just a couple of seconds. Mag is pretty low on mana here. He does have a stick with a few charges and a bottle with two charges left, as well as Walrus Punch. So if they find this Venge, they could certainly have a go here. All right, Seema pops the Arctic Burn, goes into harass back Milan. Tusk still pretty far back in the lane. Venge will continue. Hiding in the tree line here, maybe hoping they'll overcommit and she can catch him off guard. And nope, this skirmish will just kind of peter out here. Well, they are continuing to keep the pressure up on Milan, even though they won't actually go for a kill right now. And still looking very good for Vega overall. About a 2k gold lead. They've also got an award up on the lizard, getting great vision of him in the jungle. Maybe they'd look to leech some of his stacks when he continues farming them. For now, he has been allowed to mostly clear out this big camp, but. Dima looking for the potential snipe here with the splinter blast. He's going to be a bit late. Won't end up getting it. Yeah, I won't find it this go round. Back in the bottom lane, Mitch chasing He's down this Bloodseeker. from level 6, I believe. Oh, Bloodseeker might still be able to make something happen here. Mitch playing that ring around the rose. He uses the Surge as he sees the TP inward. Undershot coming around the backside. Throws out the cask. Surge up in about 5 seconds. Could this be a kill? No! The wall makes Pasha think twice. He'll wrap around the other side, though, but now Grizzine's here. Drops the stun. Rupture out on Mitch, but Pasha won't live. No one with an invisibility rune on will come down. Skewer, easy kill with a shockwave, though Grizzine will probably make it out. So a one-for-one one Dark Seer for Bloodseeker. Small advantage for Vega, I'd say, as it was no one that came in for the cleanup, and now this Magnus, number one on net worth by a healthy margin. It's a pretty cute combo, the, the Rupture Skewer, and well, not over yet as they do find an additional cleanup kill on the Grizzine. Six to two the score.
Mag is just such an active offlaner. He finds so much experience, so much farm, and he's just roaming about the map, setting up a lot for these other lanes. Milan's getting some space now uh, in his safe lane, but I feel like this rotation from the Tusk was well worth it to help out in the Dire Jungle and then come down and find that extra kill here. I, I really think a lot of it this game is, is the lanes. Vega just had a very strong dual lane. MY, I remember, started only with PL top. The Keeper of the Light starts in the mid lane and has to run all the way there. So he wasn't actually there from the word go. Uh, Vega had some just a very strong dual lane as well with the Wyvern, Tusk, the, the Ice Strat. Top, mm -hmm. top to match up against. And I think because they had a strong off lane and because he had that help early on, they're able to get the ball rolling uh, quite literally the right way. And <laughs> well, from there, from there, he just he, he does make things happen. I think that's a, a great point that not only does he get the early experience, but he gets active once he has it and is able to set things up for the team. He's still hanging out in the bottom lane, going blow for blow with Grizzly, and will force out a magic missile. Ice shards into rupture. That'll be a dead vengeful spirit. Now Mitch left behind. He'll have some support on the way. It is the storm spirit. Level six online. Will ball lightning forward onto Mag. He's already used his stick charges and no chance to use the bottle. But a beautiful cask bouncing around into a death ward. Gogi out of options here. He'll get chased down by the Blood Seeker. That'll be an easy kill. And on the other side of it, Mitch caught by a skewer shockwave. Big rotations from Vega, but it pays some dividends as they trade one for two. They're getting a lot of momentum now. Magnus already has the blink completed. We Ooh. see the reveal there, and this is only going to get worse from here. Immediate smoke up, and, and they're looking for a kill here with the RP. No skewer just yet, but I believe a blink RP with a shockwave and just a couple auto attacks is enough in and of itself. Does he blink? He's going to get hit by an Illuminate, and the smoke revealed, so Lizard. That was awful. Dodging a bullet. <laughs> I don't think he knew it was coming. Uh, more fortunate than anything else. Yeah, both of them took a lot of damage from that Illuminate. So It's not that often you'll see a Magnus go blink before Arcane Boots, but when you have this kind of momentum, it seems like he feels confident that he can make a lot happen with that mobility tool. Up in the top lane, there is a deep ward from the Dire. Looks like they will try to pressure that Tier 1 tower as one of their first targets. Trying to make some space for Milan here. About 1,800 gold on the PL. Could look for a Hand of Midas. Could just go straight into that Diffusal. We'll see uh, what he wants to pick up. But right now, a very basic kit uh, with just the Aquila and Brown Boots. So PL, still uh, a worry in this game. Can definitely still get big, but needs a lot more meat. I like the way Vega are playing. They have to keep the pressure up. MYI are just so good at turbo farming and... So snowball will roll forward towards Gogi. Deep dive back. We'll just walrus punch a creep in the end, but no one. Oh, not going to go on Lizard here. Decides to rotate out. And while this is happening, two heroes moving in bottom, but there is an Observer Ward in the lane, so it won't be an easy takedown if they go for it. Grazine about to commit. Right as the Rupture comes out, the Silence not going to hit anyone. Blink's there. RP barely catching out Mitch, and now they're going to skewer him into the tower oh. with the Rupture going all the way. And meanwhile, mid. Looks like Mag may make another go. He's got a fresh, fresh walrus punch. Ready to unload. Yeah, another great rotation from this Magnus, though. We'll hope that thought, though, is mid lane. Gogi gets hit by the cask. Now the snowball comes in. Mag, walrus punch. Easy kill for the Radiant side. Nothing MYI can do about it as more momentum goes the way of Vega. Again, an instant smoke. Venge, I think, saw that. That was sort of an awkward place to smoke up. We'll see. Maybe they can still use it for a rotation to catch her off guard. Grizzine caught by a Winter's Curse. In comes no one. You are across it. Yeah, Vengeful Spirit with limited options in that scenario. Another kill goes the way of Vega. And their Courier. Uh-oh. This is just self-destructing for MYI. Courier. Or, uh, oh, no, sorry. That was the Vega Courier actually going down. Okay. Not too Oh, bad. Vega Courier. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, someone tried to deliver an item, and then it like ran past the tower. And gets yeah. Out. yeah. I had a Mithril Hammer for Asha, so probably a BKB rush, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you go Deso or... It could be Maelstrom, maybe, just to help deal with the illusions. But. That's a good point. Yeah, Mjolnir, one of the better... Maelstrom and Mjolnir both, one of the better items to deal with illusions, and PL in particular, before he starts getting nice and beefy. Uh, well, he does go first item, Boots of Travel, interestingly yeah. enough. I'm not sure what the what the plan is, because you can get these early BOTs and look to join fights a lot, but you can also get them uh, and just look to split push. And, and PL, yeah. with just BOTs, not really combat worthy, very squishy. Any sort of nuke that he takes is going to bring him down to about half health, uh, or at least a thir two thirds, and then a follow up nuke or two. He's in thirst range, if not out outright dead. Yeah. But I like the way Vegas playing. They do not want this to turn into a far more. You can see, even though the score is twelve to three, and I believe the overall number on the graph is correct, just not the trajectory of it. Mm -hmm. They're only up twenty five hundred. 
2750 gold. That's really not much. Yeah, this is actually a bit scary. PL is getting a lot of space. We were praising Mag for all these rotations he's made, and I think it's still the right play to let that PL get some space to farm, but they need to be careful of this, and I, th I think sooner rather than Lega, uh, uh, sooner rather than ra later, Vega need to group up, start pressuring these towers, and put some hurt onto this PL, because another 15 minutes at this pace, it doesn't matter how much you pick on his friends, he will start getting close to that uh, Another mass. smoke here for Vega, Andrew. This is going to be their last one for seven minutes. They need to make sure this works. And who is the target of choice here? Possibly the Storm Spirit, but not the easiest target to gank. Looks like they'll just rotate into the jungle. I think Storm or PL here. Darkseer just completed mech. He's already got his levels. Not that valuable to kill, and they're about to make their move. If they get off the Winner's Curse, he should be dead. Death Ward coming out. Gogi, oh, he balls out barely in the nick of time. They didn't have the follow-up stun coming through, and he will survive in the end. Oh, my. Didn't have the cask, and didn't have anything for it to bounce to at the end there. That really hurts. I feel like they may have jumped the gun just a little. They, didn't, they have this ward down here, but no vision into that little area. Magnus with a double Dyer's damage and a shockwave could have been all they needed to finish that off, but he just couldn't get in position in time. Very attack. unfortunate. And with this PL now picking up a Dyer's Blade of Alacrity and the Aquila. Pretty standard PL items, but with the additional boon of having BOTs, this this amps up your rat cushion by quite a fair margin. Now you can BOT into a lane, spam out the wave a bit, get recalled right back to the other side of the map. You've got so much flexibility to, to come to fights with your team early on, and once he gets a Diffusal Blade, he becomes a bit of a threat here. There's only one point in power, not that much AoE yet. And uh, as far as the question of the Bloodseeker's item, it won't be an early Maelstrom. He's going to go into BKB. Uh, very standard pickup versus okay. these heavy nukers. And it seems this is one of the first times we'll see a Bloodseeker not go for that Hand of Midas early on. Tier 1 Tower up top does get denied, but he'll go straight for the BKB. And, you know, I've, I've been playing a lot of Spirit Breaker recently, and I think Midas is a great way to play that here on the off lane because it lets you keep your tempo. You're really strong early on, you find those kills, but it's that mid game where that hero struggles because like he's the, so single target. It's like Night based. Stalker, I think. Yeah, Same Night thing. Stalker, Bloodseer. A lot of heroes that fall into that category that have really high EHP early on, but they can fall off if they don't keep finding kill after kill, and Midas can be a nice little middle ground so that you can transition. And I'm curious and a little bit nervous for this Bloodseeker that if he doesn't find a lot of kills with this BKB, if Vega don't hit this mid-game timing and just get a huge amount of momentum, I think he'll start to, to fall off in his potency pretty damn fast, especially once that BKB gets closer to that five-second charge. Yeah, I'm a little surprised he rushes it. Uh, it will allow them to fight, that's for damn sure, but I imagine this is going to be the focus for the Mitch walking right out of the silence. He mechs himself. He's going to surge away wall ruptured. Mitch just... What the? Oh my goodness, he just killed himself basically with the That rock. was bold. I guess seeing all the TPs thinking, well, if I stay close to the tower, I'm going to die anyhow. Magnus is definitely one of them, but that's a freebie to get things started. Now there's no mech for the rest of the fight. Grizzine will take a walrus punch, tries to TP home, but there's a cask ready and waiting, interrupts the channel, and Venge will be put six feet under. Nice two for nil there for Vega. PL invisible well, you might be able nearby. To get the courier. Poor courier. Pink spot, no. Oh, well, nice play from Milan. He'll also get recalled from the Coddle, so getting that taxi service out of harm's way. Very nice. <laughs> they recall him on him. He TP's top. He's like, what the hell are you doing? Leave me alone. <laughs> He's all over the place. Very deep ward from Seam of the Slayer here on the uh, Dire Plateau. So I think this is definitely a sign that Vega will step up the momentum Dyer's a little bit and try to bring the fight to MYI. They, they really need these deep wards, and they also need to be converting them into kills. Because if they're not... As, again, as good as these fights look, they're only up 3,500 gold. Now, granted, that's without many towers, just the tier 1 mid. And mm -hmm. once they start getting them, this could balloon up to like a 7 to 8k gold lead. But yeah, imagine if they lose a fight. All of a sudden, this is back to dead even. So not out of the woods yet by any means for Vega. And, and with no smokes currently available, still 4 minutes, a little bit less before they have them. They'll be looking for the kills through the wards instead. Here comes the snowball on. Goes through one onto Grazine and, and passed him on to Lizard. Oh, here's the follow-up. Now Gogi comes in. He wants Pasha, but Winter's Curse is there. What an RP from no one. Catches nearly the entire dire side. The Death War getting a full channel, doing huge damage. It's a bloody disaster for MYI here. LD Milan just barely survives to the end of it. And probably not for long. Snowball on the way, but a nice doppelganger to the high ground will keep him safe. Still a three for nil. The Storm able to ball out in the end. Vega showing us what their team fight prowess is all about. Winter's Curse into the RP. What a setup. <sighs> that was just a sick RP. That There's really not much more to say about it. I, I guess the one thing to add is all of it set up by this ward. This ward, it's nighttime. It gives them the extra vision they need and
And with that, Dyer's they're able to find a tower tower colossal team fight. Do end up taking the tier one bottom. Dyer's they won't be able to grab tier two, but fallen. gives them a ton of momentum here. Dyer's and well, attack. with that, every single hero on Vega now out farming their counterparts, and now this graph does start to get a bit out of hand. Up to seven and a half K gold lead, 14 kill advantage. Yeah, and those. Are Let me say that again. 14 kill advantage. I'm surprised it's not like a 15,000 cold lead to be honest. Yeah, but those are exactly the kind of fights they want to take, though. I, you know, a five for one. I, I would not necessarily say is better than a three for nil there because they don't give MYI anything. PL came to that fight. He wasn't split pushing, wasn't farming, and he just got nothing out of it. There was really no positive there from MYI, though their losses could have been slightly higher. Blink Dagger now comes out for Mag. We're seeing some pretty serious item Dyer's progression on this radiant attack. side. The Wyvern will start making progress towards the uh, Glimmer. Cape and Witch Doctor, he's almost at the Agonims already, nearly a thousand gold, and he'll have it. This is shaping up to be a great timing for Undershock, and I mean, that Death Ward did huge damage in that fight. Just imagine if that was Ags upgraded. That's Dyer's just... And he's going to have it fast, as you're pointing out. 150 Dyer's gold till the third component, and then he just needs the Blade of Alacrity. Yeah. In fact, he's got the third component now. I don't even think MYI have the late game necessarily. You've got an amazing team fight from Vega. They have the lead that you want in this matchup, and Empowered Bloodseeker is going to chew through illusions. The mm -hmm. PL is still very squishy, just barely into four digit HP. Yep. It's going to need to go probably 40, 50 minutes for MYI to really turn this around. Yeah, they're not even close to out of the clear. And just so many heroes on Vega are farming so well. Even this Magnus now has a Force Staff, Arcane Boots, and a Shadow Amulet. He's got so many mobility tools. He's just going to be a, a threat at every stage of the game. Bloodseeker now moving into an SNY. And Tusk, we talked about that Blink Dagger. So huge initiation power and... We'll see when they want to take another team fight. All the ultimates available for Vega, and I think it's on them to keep this a, a high octane matchup. By the way, after that fight bottom, I'm not sure if uh, you, you've shown this just yet on the main observer camera, but oh my. they went <laughs> for some major dewarding. They're like, okay, they definitely have vision here. There's no way he gets an RP like that without it, but. Uh, they did find the one Observer Ward up in the hill. Still, that's another 300 it's, gold. It's four sentries and an Observer in this area. There, We are not getting caught off guard again. Uh, 400 gold. Actually, yeah, they, they dropped down the, the other one here on the hill that I, I didn't see. That's, yep. that's a big investment for some very poor supports. <laughs> yes, exactly. And... You know, in an area that may not necessarily see another fight in the duration of where that observer was down. Vega could easily Bottom just pressure lane. another lane. Yep, Mitch gonna get snowballed here. He's already used his surge. He does have a mech though. I don't think Mag can solo kill him, but don't worry. There's a Bloodseeker on the way. There's the rupture, and now Mitch, in a world of hurt, vacuum to try and make a little space for himself. Now in the but, dire jungle, mm. right into the meat grinder here as well. Potentially, Grazine getting hit by a Splinter Blast. They are fighting without two of their heroes though, and. No, no, one's that, in a no one, spot after here. catching himself in the trees, will just hold on to his four staff and, and run away, it looks like. Yeah, there we go. And four staffs back to safety. So now the SNY comes out on the Bloodseeker, and Vega will continue on the pressure. And it was only a rupture used for that kill down in the bottom lane, not the longest of cooldowns. So they still have RP, Death Ward, ready to rock and roll. Oh, oh it's just snowballing some creeps. Yep. Oh, yeah. And Winter Wyvern does have that Glimmer Cape. So now, another, I mean, you look at Vega, there's just so much mobility here. Shadow Blades, the super fast Blood Seeker, two Blink Daggers, now a Glimmer Cape. The only one that's not that mobile is the Witch Doctor, and that's pretty understandable as he's now just 300 gold away from that Agonims. I think that's probably what Vega's waiting for. That big item just to come out, and then they'll try to commence another team fight. And, and he's maybe also catch got the level 2 Death Ward. Oh, so yeah. Level yeah, 2 Death Ward nice. coming out with the, the RP. They've now maxed out in power for your Magnus and no one oh. and Bloodseeker is going to hit like an absolute truck at this point. This is, I mean, Witch Doctor is now doubling the damage his ultimate did in the last team fight. He's got level 11 and it bumps it up an extra. It goes from 60 to 120. That might not sound like a lot, but that Death Ward is a pretty fast attack speed. That is really scary for MYI. You know, someone like Coddle going up against that damage, sure, he's got the point booster, but he's only at 900 HP. He's just going to melt under all that physical Here comes damage. a rotation from MYI, bringing in both supports towards this bottom side of the map, but there's the rupture. We'll find the PL. Silence coming out now. The BKB commitment with an RP. They should be able to get the kill skewer back and oh, burns him to yeah. death. He bleeds out on the ground. 
That is some great synergy. The rupture with the skewer. It's like a built-in force staff. You just push them across and... And you've got the force staff, so you could yeah. skewer back <laughs> force, force like a staff bit further. <laughs> I like it that. Used to be, uh, it used to be a little bit more popular, at least in pubs for Bloodseekers, to just go right into a force staff and yep. clownily just push them around. But nowadays, it, it seems like it's a little bit more about just being that right-clicking machine that, that mm -hmm. he can can become and yeah he's getting there 13k net worth you know i did actually see somebody force staff a uh, gyrocopter homing missile the other day it was in a pub game but for the first time ever i actually saw somebody utilize that to get a quick little kill when that was that when that change was announced everyone started experimenting oh, uh, with it and then i think most people quickly realized it's, it's not that good really uh, not that great it's just such a strange and obscure mechanic that you would never you would never think of as a, as a newcomer to Dota, why would you ever think that you could force staff that little missile? Oh, Maggie set a trap here for Mitch. Snowball's gonna find him. They have the uppercut ready to go. He's gonna use it. Now the follow-up coming through from no one. Skewer back. Shockwave not enough. He mechs up. He turns. Vacuum wall drop. But Splinter Blast coming through. Mitch put under by the curse. Will end up falling. Now Grazine likely to be next. A secondary set of shards. Should be enough to bring him down. The sigil flying high. The swap. A Rooney. Not going to get the job done. <laughs> uh, a, a noble swap there, but unfortunately not going to do much to turn the tides. A two for nil, but this time PL is doing some split push up top. He does have the Mantis style, but still no Diffusal. An interesting item trajectory here from this PL. Normally you'll see the Diffusal come out first, and then once the man uh, Manta is completed, that's when PL is really scary, because you can doppelgang and then use your Manta. You've got a whole bunch of illusions that all can mana burn and do huge DPS. Here, yeah, he's beefier now, but still not really that scary in these fights. It's a better split pushing item. It, it allows them yeah. to push the waves in quicker. And the other thing with the Manta is it gives you a second way to dodge some of these big single target spells. The Winter's Curse, uh, potentially the Bloodseeker Rupture. If he gets ruptured, he's probably dead in these fights. They just don't have many ways to save him. So I think this is more of the stalling item build, but you're right. It, if it comes to a fight, he's not going to bring nearly as much to the table. And with that, Aegis picked up by the Bloodseeker. Mm -hmm. It looks like he may be headed into a silver edge here to help deal with that PL. Yeah. And gonna have it soon if that's the way he wants to go. Yeah, oh, that's something else we haven't mentioned, but they could have double silver edge. Magnus already has his shadow blade, and yeah, great item against PL. It actually stops him from uh, bringing out illusions. It cancels that juxtapose passive, and... It is a, a very effective counter to PL, I think, suffice it to say. And having two Silver Edges makes it even easier. No one the bot or in the top lane, rather, will push back the Creep Wave Milan. Nearby in the uh, the tree line, but will opt just to TP towards the mid and continue split pushing Magus over there where Mag's tower, farming away. Tower. Also, Mag has picked up a Glimmer Cape now, so it even also, more mobility. You know, you mentioned uh, Juxtapose. It also disables Phantom Rush, actually, which yes, means it does. Yeah. PL does very little. At that point, you can Manta... Maybe if you're six slotted, you're still hitting hard, but it, it makes you wonder, should Milan go into that BKB PL build? We've seen it sometimes, the BKB, Abyssal Blade, maybe you get a Butterfly or an MKB in the mix there, and you play more as a single target damage dealer. Mm -hmm. You have your Illusion Army, but you're not itemizing just to maximize how much the Illusions do. It's, right. it's a possibility, it just... Either way, it kind of forces Peel out of his element and out of his comfort yeah. zone. So I think even if he goes that route, it's, it's a win here for Vega. It reminds me a little bit of Storm being forced into an early BKB. There's some games where you just can't argue with it. You have to do it, but it's never your go-to. It's never what you want to do. And speaking of Gogi, he has picked up a Bloodstone. So he has found some item progression going for the slightly more defensive kind of farm-oriented tool here so we can clear out the jungle. We mentioned one of the weaknesses of this Dire Draft is that it's very greedy. And this is that stage of the game when their four cores are really trying to make some use out of the jungle. I want Coddle in there because and the way he farms the jungle is, is kind of like the way a core would go about it. And this is where Vega, 27 minutes in, they are ready to rumble. They've got every ultimate. They take out a tier 2 tower. They're going straight to the high ground. You might kill the creep wave, but this Bloodseeker is going to do heavy damage. Uh -oh. Quick skewers there. The Wyvern helping to keep his Bloodseeker alive. Grazine will fall before the Winter's uh, or Cold Embrace even ends rather. And yeah. well, Vega going to keep on pushing it. So Milan split pushing. He may get a tier 2 tower in the top lane. He forces out the Radiant Glyph. Dire will use theirs about simultaneously here under Shock. Actually pretty low on mana using that to do like back to kill off this Aegis. He's oh. going to try for it. Now the Illuminate. A nice one. They put the, the an ally under, but in the meantime, Pasha looking to go to work. He's BKB'd, oh. but he's being just held in place for now. Finally will back off. That was a great setup. The vacuum wall into the Illuminate did huge damage. No one just barely survived, but in the end, Vegas team fight just proved a bit too much. Witch Doctor with the ulti and uh, they don't lose Rex, though. Yeah, they, they push back the PL. That's good. Bloodseeker does have Aegis. They can go back in here. 
And it looks like they will. The Witch Doctor, though, is out of mana, unfortunately. That means you don't have his, you don't have his ultimate, you don't have his heal for this push, and mm -hmm. I think Vega are gonna have to reset and go for one more push before the Ages expires. They've got two minutes. If they go home and heal now, yeah. they can walk right back down mid, push out the top lane beforehand with no one, and then look for that potential tier three in lane of Rack. Yeah, I agree. I think this is the time when you force the issue with the Aegis, and that's close to the dream for MYI. You get a great setup with the Dark Seer, big burst damage to follow up, your PL's farming and split pushing, and you stop Vega from using a couple key ultimates there. There was no RP used, the Death Ward was used, but didn't do a hell of a lot of damage. I feel like it was really that winner's curse that turned out that around, and a giant clustered up situation like that, it's just such a powerful spell. Uh, it's so easy for Seema to get a, a key ulti there. Um, it was kind of a weird fight as well because Bloodseeker ended up getting cold embraced while BKB'd and on his first life. I thought he was going to lose the Aegis there and then and then potentially yeah. die, but uh, or then come back and not have a BKB to build a fight. But it was a little fun. Ended up working out okay, and he's still got a, a nine. Uh, no, actually, it's down a bit. It's a seven second BKB, so he's been using it a yeah. lot actually. One issue here for MYI though is that they did have to burn their glyph, and if they force the issue within the next three minutes, having that reset tool is actually pretty damn important when you have a Bloodseeker that can siege towers so easily. They're looking to set up top here, but there's two heroes in position. A Shiva's Garden enabled Magnus, and Undershock in the neighborhood, moving in. Meanwhile, hunting his mag. He just walks through mid. He's going to blink out a bit. Lizard pushing him up and oh. away. Almost back towards safety. Okay. He will Dyer's escape. Not too bad. PL does pick attack. up the Diffusal Blade now, though. All that split pushing did uh, yield a nice bit of income for him, and now he has Mana Burns. This is that point where PL is actually scaring this in these fights. When he doppelgang uh, Mantos on top of one of these supports, they just melt under all that Mana Burn. But here we go. BOT's back. This Tier 3 tower will certainly fall. Aegis of the Immortal going down very soon. Why is there check. no back door protection? I don't see any creeps. That is kind of strange, actually. Was there? There might have been one creep that popped up. This Aegis is going to expire in just about 10 seconds or so. Pasha needs to be very careful here if he wants to feel the benefits of that regen rune that will be coming his way momentarily. Bloodrite comes out. PL Illusions taking away some of his mana. And Aegis will go down. Oh, back no. back. They take it out. Oh, ho, ho. Cold Embrace just in time. Magnus Airball comes in RP. with Darp and Skewer. Okay. Now the zip out. Storm wants Vengeance. Gogi trying to do what he can, Electric Vortex onto no one, but he will survive, compliments of the Snowball, the Death Ward bouncing around like crazy. Undershock taking some heavy damage, but they get the kill onto Milan. No buyback available for the PL, all of a sudden this is a disastrous fight for MYI, the sustainability from Vega coming out true, Gogi the second to go down, now Grazine initiated on by no one, Shiva's guard has been saved this whole time, Snowball charged up right into the face of Mish, Ishkafel will get his pointy head slapped down a few notches. Ultra kill for the Bloodseeker. Toddle did do a little bit of cleanup, took that out actually, two supports. That but looked like you mentioned it's disastrous for MYI, and it definitely turns out that way. It looked like it was going to be disastrous for Vega. Yeah. The Bloodseeker gets hit by an Illuminate, brought down to like the 10 to 20% HP threshold right when the Aegis expires, so he doesn't get the heal from the Aegis. Mm -hmm. Then the Magnus goes in, completely airballs the Blink RP. <laughs> And then the PL Illusion army starts to stack up. Bloodseeker's not able to kill them. The Witch Doctor Death Wards, but he's quickly brought low by PL and has to turn tail and run. Cancels the Death Ward. Mm -hmm. But then it just wasn't quite enough. Bloodseeker was cold embraced, kept alive, gets that yeah. first kill, and... And then it's just all over. Yeah, and that's that's the key difference. Coddle now has an ag at him, so there is some sustainability for the dire side. But did he have the eggs during the fight? I I'm actually not sure. I I want to say he didn't. I didn't notice the big burst heals, but no, I don't um, think I, he did. I, I didn't check. I'm pretty sure he didn't. He was the lone survivor, and he did pick up a couple of those kills at the end. So I think he did just get that last bit of gold that he needed. Uh -oh, oh, down Milan. bottom could be in trouble here. They're recalling him, but oh, oh auto attack. Get, get, get him! Get him! Because oh. he does. Okay, Manta style coming in handy there. Now Pasha will lose all of his mana to these He PL was mid illusions. attack animation to cancel the recall, and then he just happens to Manta. <laughs> that How was unfortunate. Some, some game sense there from the PL. Very nice. Full Scotty, though, up on the Bloodseeker. He got a lot out of that last fight, so we just hit look at item progression in general. And Scotty's such a good item. You have Empower this game. And double Shivas. Wow, you don't see that so often. But Mag and no one both going for the, the big boy. And now a blink on Seema. Jesus. This Bloodseeker is going to be a... I don't even know what the right the right word is. Just a, a disgusting force of mass destruction, yeah. basically. You know, double Shivas against PL is actually not that ridiculous. That's a lot of AoE damage that you have all of a sudden. It fits thematically with the draft as well. They've got a bit of an ice strat going on here. Yeah, that's true. There's uh, this nice wintry motif here. Nice wintry mix.
Yeah, we're not getting that right now in LA. That's <laughs> getting the, yeah. uh, nice, nice, enjoyable hot summers. But mm, they're gonna push in mid here. I wonder if they just walk bottom. They're pretty freaking far ahead, man. Yeah, and this is where the Bloodseeker is just. A very good seizure. He's very tanky, has the BKB, a lot of stats, and he hits really damn hard. So he can just chunk this tower down, and with that Solar Crest buff as well, he's even tankier. Now a short swap from Venge will get Pasha a little bit low, but he just wants to man up. He'll take this fight, and all of a sudden, it's a 5v4. Vengeful Spear not going to be able to do a hell of a lot. Uh -oh. Gogi comes in, pull back on that Ice Cube. He's moving the Iceberg across. But the Snowball buys him some time. Now the reset comes. The Death War gets channeled. Darkseer gets dropped. The PL will have to come back to the base. It's nighttime, so Kyle will not going to be able to make use of this Agonims the way he'd like. A fast two for nil as Vega find another successful siege. Yeah, they have no creeps here, though. The bottom lane's pushing in. Mid lane, it's close, so they might be able to sneak back in again, but no one's looking for a pick off here. He gets hit by the lance. Now they're going to ball forward on him. There's a sentry waiting up the hill. He does have a ghost after, but that can be perched off if the PL's quick on the defusal blade. It's cooling down, actually. And while that's happening, Pasha moves on forward. Oh, what a golden bouncing. grace! It keeps no one alive. He's got an RP here still going on to Grizzine and Milani turns it around and grabs both. Now MYI in dire straits. PL dead. He has a buyback. Could still make the hold. Winter Wyvern, ladies and gentlemen, this would have been a completely different scenario without that cold embrace. The glimmer cape, oh. the cold embraces, even the curses, just everything Seema's brought to the table has been sensational. And with that... This may be the end of MYI's hopes and dreams here in the ES Portal Dota 2 League. They're not out of it 100%, but it's feeling like 95 plus right now. Seema, a huge skirmish breaking out in the tree line. The vacuum comes forward. Skewers there. Oh no, a ruptured Gogi, oh. who's almost finished off by the Bloodseeker. Would have healed up massively, but instead ends up falling. Now, perhaps they get cleaned up and punished for their overextension. They've lost two. Seema's going to be the third man down. The rest have to scatter and run. A triple kill for Milan. They haven't lost an additional later Brax. Mag will fall as well. Uh -oh. Four heroes down. It almost was a complete team wipe the other way. And now PL goes straight to the top lane. The creep equilibrium not where Vega wants. There's a couple of buybacks here. Bloodseeker as well as the Winter and Wyvern. I think they're going to need to burn one. Tower goes down. There is a glyph. But Barracks they, they in trouble. Buy back. They should not give away Elena Brax to Connell PL. There we go. Both will buy back. PL backs out right away, and this is what they were afraid of. They forced the buybacks, and PL is just able to make it out the oh. recall. Oh my gosh. Pasha has to be upset about that one. So two buybacks used. Tier 3 tower falls. That is huge for MYI. What a what a what a close fight. As bad as that ends up looking for Vega, if Bloodseeker gets that first kill on the storm. He's probably picking up multiple Completely kills. Completely different. I th I'm 90% sure he was empowered there. It looks like he was doing a lot of AoE damage. He just charged in, cleaning it up, and uh, yeah, man, just a totally different, uh, totally different fight. But Roche is now up. Dire Side will walk into the pit, and we'll see if this gets contested. Radiant, uh, they have no vision in this area of the map, but we do see a couple of pings coming. Not the fastest Roche lineup, lacking on the minus armor. Bloodseeker nearby, but he's just clearing out neutrals. Looks like this will be an uh, Aegis of the Immortal going the way of the dire side. So, I don't know, LD. What, what were the numbers we threw out? 40, 45 minutes when this PL will start to take over? We're getting there. MYI's hanging on. If they can just stay one lane of barracks down, they can easily turn this game and take us to a game three. There's your Aegis picked up by the PL, and, well, don't call it a comeback just yet, Andrew, but this could quickly turn. Mm hmm. And remember, the PL did buy back for that last defense. So on the, the flip side of it, all Vega need to do is kill that PL twice through Aegis. Speaking of which, oof. he's been caught out a bit here. Uh-oh. Let's see if starting to get onto him. Needs the rupture to go off, though, to have a chance with this kill. And if he doesn't, PL might be able to turn it the other way. Gets the silence going, but PL able to doppelganger to the north, retreats out successfully. Oh, man. That is just so frustrating for the Bloodseeker. Now down to the five-second BKB. Not much he can do here, but he will Shadow Blade up. The rest of his team inbound. Maybe they can cut off the PL here, actually. That could be huge. All right, so Milan, much the snowball's coming from. I don't think it gets here quite in time. Nope. Okay, there you go. This recall is proving uh, quite effective as well. A lot of close calls now. They're still looking for him. <laughs> it's one more good fight, and this is going to be a very manageable game for MII because it'll probably dip around or below a 10k gold lead. Experience lead gets down to like 15k. They're only down one lane of racks. 
But it also can go the other way. If yeah. they go in a big fight, they're looking at a full two, two if not three yeah. lanes of red. Yeah, so this is this is scary time. Couple of cores with buyback on cooldown for the next three and a half, four minutes or so. Last outer tower for the dire side will get finished off, still putting a good use to that solar crest as they just put Pasha in the front lines and let him be that tanky devil. Now the third Shiva's of the game picked up, this time on the dire side. Will Darkseer getting some farm here now with his Guardian Greaves. Uh, as well as the Shiva's guard. I am like, slightly surprised to see them trying to push in the top lane now. And well, with that, bag back wall. Shiva's follow up. They get the wall down in the end. And Mitch now just going to stand his ground. They ruptured the vent, so she can't really go in for a swap here. As Mitch gets pushed back away from his team, but PL is pushing the bottom lane in. A little bit of rat Dota from Milan. He might even be able to take two lanes of racks. They could cancel some TPs here as well. As Gogi throws his life away just to try to hold the line, he will end up falling now down to one bloodstone charge. They have found Milan, but no more BKB on Pasha. Milan might be able to start cleaning up here. Seema Force back in the end. He doesn't get a lane of Rax, but the melee is dangerously low. Top is also exposed. And for the Radiant, they only did about 400 damage to the tower here. Bloodseeker going back now for a Maelstrom. Okay. It seems like Vega is starting to feel like they don't have the solutions they need for these illusions. Yeah, now that was a 2 for nil fight. They didn't get the damage on the tower. Not bad for Vega, but not ideal either. And oh man, this PL is becoming hard to deal with. They might want to try and wait out the ages if they can. It's going to be another two and a half minutes. Not too much longer to wait, but PL will have, what I would assume, is an Eye of Scotty coming out before too long here with this ultimate orb and another 3,000 uh, sitting in that savings account. His buyback cooldown is coming up here in just about two minutes. So right as he loses the ages, he'll have that buyback. Um, coming up. Pretty uh, pretty convenient there, the way the stars have aligned. Now a Blink Dagger on the Witch Doctor. So even more mobility. Let's just look at this Radiant side for a moment. There's <laughs> three Blink Daggers, three Glimmer Capes, a Fourth Staff, a Shadow and, and Blade, a, sh a Blood Seeker, they have Skewer. And an S and Y. And they have Skewer and Snowball as well. It's, yeah. it's Team Mobile. But it really is. It's it's kind of insane, actually. Is, does there come a point where mobility has so many so much of a diminishing return that it's just not I worth definitely, it? I definitely don't think they need more. Right? I'll put it that way. I don't, yeah. I don't say any of these items is a waste, necessarily. It's pretty hard to go wrong with Fourth Staffs and Blink Daggers in general in Dota. They're just yeah. two of the very most cost-efficient and game-changing items there are, but... I think at this point you're good. At this point you want damage, you want tank tank items, you want items that will just let you bruise and get into a rumble and come out on top. Yeah. But right. They are going to start pushing the lanes in, Andrew, and I think this is really the key for Vega. Maybe the one type of mobility that they don't have, which I wouldn't mind seeing, is like another pair of boots of travel. Yeah. Just so they can split push a little more and keep the lanes out, but... At the same time, PL can solo kill a lot of these heroes, or at the very least, force them back. So you got to be yeah. careful. You've got two heroes on Vega that don't have BOTs and no room for a TP scroll. It's a mag and no one. Two of the cores that won't be able to make that quick retreat back to the base if PL gets up to some trickery. PL split pushing up top, but he's still pretty far away from the base as Vega move into the exposed lane of barracks. Remember, Dyer have a glyph here. But this is a good position for Vega relative to where they have been in these last little fights. They could easily finish off some structures here, then just head back and defend top. Pasha in the front lines, Glimmer caped up. That'll be the end of the ranged barracks, not Radiant, the biggest loss. Radiant also have a glyph, so they could back off here and just get a free range track. So Radiant's looks like that's what they'll looks do. Looks like that will be the play. MYI not seeing anybody. Not really a good time to try for a TP cancel. And well, a clean take there. I think that's what okay. Vega are looking for. Just safe, clean takes. Don't overextend. Don't get your TPs canceled. Although, right as I say that, no one will get caught out. He BKBs quickly. They have a swap available if need be to cancel a TP, but there's your Glimmer Cape coming into play, and Magnus wow, could be able to blink was... and force away. That was a very odd Dire... out fight there. That I was, was... going to say Dire needs a gem. They actually have one, but it's on Lizard, and I almost feel like you have to risk giving this to somebody else because Lizard yeah. is just not going to be in the middle of these fights. He's going to be sitting... Way far back. No, I would say give it to the Storm. He's the one that's right up in the fray. He'll probably be chasing down someone who would be glimmer caping away. And he's also, he's got that happy medium of mobility and survivability. Is, yeah, you know, PL is not ideal. Dark is too likely to die. Yeah, he's, Dark he's basically Sears. their initiator. Storm's just not farmed enough to be the one who goes in first most of the time. At least not for a big fight. So yeah, I, I would agree. I think you give it to Storm here. Mag going a bit man mode here. Solar Crest again, buying oh, him a little bit of time. They him. Snowball in. Now he's in some trouble. Glimmer came, not going to save him this time on the backside. Huge wall vacuum from Mitch. It could cost him his life, but Mag's still alive. Swap back from the bench. She'll play Sacrificial Lamb as Pasha gets the kill there. On the other side of it, Gogi really wants to finish off Mag, he but he just can't bottom. do it. Okay. 
Tier 3 tower has gone down. Wallace Punch onto Gogi. PL now onto the barracks. Radiant will use their glyphs straight away. All five still alive for Vega. Ice Cube used onto Pasha. They've got exposed barracks, and I think Vega can just go all in here and take this down. Storm dies, but buys back. There's your dire glyph. This could be the final fight. No one BKB'd up as he just tries to repel. PL has taken out the bottom lane of barracks, and now he's going to go straight top. Wants to try and do as much damage as he can. Are they throning it? Are they just going to trade Megas, maybe, in exchange for... Uh, looks like they are going for Megas here. They've cleaned up the top lane. Now they're heading on the bottom, and they have the two-man advantage right now. With PL not here, it's actually a three-man advantage, and now Milan will join the fight, oh, no. but he's pulled right into the fray as Vega engaged. There's the Witch Doctor damage follow-up, and they're able to get the kill. Five heroes dogpiling in. PL will buy back, re-engage, back walls there with the Shivas. Everybody on Vega forced back, glimmering to safety. They need this detection. Keeper of the Light does have the gem, but again, Lizard just too far away. They didn't see anyone, and they'll walk back to safety. It is Mega Creeps. Oh and with the tower still up mid, it gets very tough from here for MYI. Yeah, absolutely. Vega making the right call there, realizing that, yeah, PL can do a lot of damage to our base, but the difference of Megas versus two lanes of barracks is Dyer's just ridiculous and borderline Dyer's insurmountable here for MYI. This tier two tower, probably the hero for Vega right now, preventing them from being Mega. Just no way PL can clear out that many structures that quickly. And now they basically have this game in the bag. They've already lost one of their tier four towers. They can stall out for a little while, but this could be the all-in push down here in the bottom lane. Uh-oh, uh Pasha gets stunned up. Not a bad way to get things started. BKB, but he swapped back. It's a one-on-four, and the Bloodseeker's dead. He does have a He's buyback, got a buyback. 100 seconds on the sideline. Well, actually, does he? They have to push in mid lane here if they want to go for Megas of their own. Mm, I... Are they just going know. for the win? This is an they, awkward kind of all-in They want to force the buyback, so that's why they're kind of sticking bottom. They know if they go mid, it's going to take too long, but I don't think Vega are really worried. They're not going to get mega I It's very risky to go for a throne play, but maybe that's what MYI are doing. Uh-oh, he has buyback, and now they're like, oh, shit. Now Let's get the hell away. Witch Doctor in a beautiful position here for a key ultimate. He's hiding in the tree line. Witch's Curse comes down. Undershock from the side into a huge RP. MYI in trouble. Their hopes and dreams in the ES Portal Dota 2 tournament are evaporating before our eyes. GG is called as Milan mentions his FPS dropping as are ours. A clean 5 for nil. Domination slapping them around to finish off this game. My oh my. Vega coming out big. And with that... It will be MYI eliminated. Vega moving on. They will face, I believe it's Team Empire in the first round of the playoffs. So four teams remain, uh, well, will remain after today. We've got our next.